Hello everyone and welcome to this special video. I know we usually don't have videos on Sunday, but I actually wanted to talk about an important topic, which is where to start our 3D journey. This is a question that I get asked every now and then, especially from beginner level students. And I want to cover like the basics of what the 3D world is. So whenever I teach any of the classes, uh, especially with the DCC applications, I like to talk about something called the 3D production pipeline. And I always, always, always use this little thing right here. So let me copy it real quick because it's an excellent, excellent way to visualize what happens on a production pipeline. So There we go. So if you want to get into 3D, that probably means that you want to do one of three things. You want to do advertisement, you want to do games, or you want to do film. That's usually the, the main like reason why people jump into the into the 3D world. When I was when I first started in the 3D world, my idea was to be working on the cinematics department of a big studio. But as I kept discovering more and more things, my focus started changing and I went a little bit more into games. And nowadays I'm a 3D produ producer, so I am in charge of producing 3D content for VR experiences and things like that. So the the 3D world, the, the 3D R world is divided into these three main categories: pre-production, production and post-production. And I like to really divide these three categories because there are certain things that people really like to do that are of different parts of the process. So if you're one of those people that really like to come up with the story, draw characters, create the scenes in your mind and, the, and, and like find the designs of things, you're probably gonna be on the pre-production side of things. And if you wanna do pre-production for 3D, there's two main areas where you can fit. First of all, there's the 3D concept art the side of things where you do uh, sea versus skulls, Maya models, renders, and stuff like that. But your only focus is to get the idea out there. And if you want to go through a more traditional approach, you can do 2D concept art, right? Like uh, storyboard, sketching, character designs, all that sort of stuff. Usually, if you're working on a pre-production, the client or the studio will come to you with an idea, and it's your job to materialize that idea into something that's visible, that's tangible. So some of you guys have seen uh, like several of the concepts that I've been using for the past courses. Most of them are coming from a concept artist. His name is Eduardo and uh, he's in charge. I tell him the story, I tell him the idea. He does the drawings and then I use those drawings to jump onto the next stage, which is the production pipeline. In the production pipeline, this is the area that I specialize the most. My job is to make sure that the idea that we have, a very clear idea that we have from a design perspective is properly executed so that we have all of the necessary things to deliver the product, okay? Now, this is where I'm gonna be talking about like the courses that you need or the, the steps that you need to take if you wanna get into the production side of things. If you wanna be a producer, the first thing you need to decide is what kind of a DCC application I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using. So the DCC application is like the main package. I always talk about it like the like the core of a body, like the um, um, the spine of the of the human body, right? So from the spine, we have things like the arms and the legs, which are like accessory softwares that we can use. But we have one main software that we are going to be using, and there's two, or I would say three main softwares that we can use, and we have of course courses for them. So if this is your first time learning about 3D, one of the best advices is Maya. Maya has been an industry standard for a long time, and we have this uh, one right here, which is called the Complete Guide to Maya 2023. Maya is a software that I learned 12 years ago. It's a super, super powerful software. You can do pretty much anything. You can do modeling, texturing, rigging, animation, BFX, lightning, rendering. So all of the production pipeline you can do inside of the software without actually having to go anywhere else. Um, however, it is useful to go into other softwares as well. Now, that course that I just mentioned, the, the Maya course, the intro to Maya 2023 covers every single thing that you need to do to actually produce a little short. We do a little short on that course, and that's a great way to start. Another super strong contender, of course, is Blender. Blender has been on the radar of a lot of people for a couple of years now. I know we always have this eternal debate of Blender is better than Maya, Maya is, blend is better than Blender. They're both really strong. And uh, from my point of view, I, I never look at the software and be like, this is the software that everyone should use. You should use the software that fits your current like uh, like position, right? So sometimes you might not have funding to use or to license Maya for a huge studio, then Blender might be a perfectly valid option. We also have Blender courses, of course, but Blender is really, really good. And it also is a DCC application when you can do modeling, texturing, rendering, animation, everything. Um, I, to all of my Maya students, I would definitely 
like tell you guys keep a, keep an eye open for blender because there are certain tools inside of blender there are certain plugins and things that are really 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 good and if you're a maya user and you use blender to support maya to do certain things that might be a little bit more complex or time consuming instead of maya you're going to be able to get so much more of your creative work same thing for blender users if you've been using blender take a look at maya i know the license is always a thing that makes people hesitate about jumping to another software but in this case maya has the indie license which is very very affordable and maya is a very very, very powerful tool. Um, just like generally speaking, uh, which is again, the, the eternal debate, uh, which one should I learn Maya or Blender? If you want to go a little bit more into the indie side of things, you want to go like open source and stuff like that. Blender is a perfectly valid option. If you want to work at big studios, like the movie studios in the United States or in Canada, those usually will be using uh, Maya because that's like the standard right now. But that might change in the next couple of years. We don't know. That's why I always told you guys stay, stay with your uh, like eyes wide open to see what's going to happen there. Now, let's say you already master or you're already, you're already good with one of these DCC applications. What's, what's the next step? Like, like I, I already know a little bit about Maya. I know how to model. How can I get to the next level? That's where the specialty tools or the specialty software comes into play. Because depending on what kind of things you want to do inside of the production, you will be using certain tools more than others. What do I mean by this? I always like to use the analogy of a hospital. So if you want to be a doctor, you're usually going to be going through medicine school. You're going to become a doctor and then you're going to choose a specialty, right? Maybe like a pathology or traumatology or intern medicine. I think it's the name or family medicine. Like there's a lot of different, like the eye doctor, the stomach doc doctor, like you have a doctor for pretty much every organ in the body. Well, the same thing happens here in the 3D world. Once you understand or have a general idea of how the production is going to be working, you can pick one thing that you like the most. Do you like animation? Do you like to do assets such as like props, weapons, uh, environments, and things like that? Do you, want, do you want to do characters? Do you want to do creatures? Like depending on which ones you want, you will be using certain like softwares. But I would say there are three softwares that it, they're pretty much a must have for any 3D artist as long as you're in like the, the creation side of things. Like on this first stage, if you're gonna be modeling and texturing, you definitely need the softwares. You need a sculpting software and you need a texturing software. And other than that, I would strongly recommend a rendering software. Why? Because I've seen a lot of students that have really, really cool tools, really, really interesting uh, elements that they've done in Maya or in ZBrush, but they present them in a really not so good way. So being able to render your stuff properly is a huge, huge advantage for your portfolio and for your career as a 3D artist. Um, and it's probably happened to you. I'm not sure if you've ever gone to like a restaurant, like a very fancy restaurant where they present the dishes like super, super good, but sometimes they don't even taste it that good. That's because presentation really, really sells. It might not be the best product, but if you present it in a really nice way, you can get ahead of the game for a long, like, you know, in, a, in big steps. So the three softwares that every single person needs to learn is ZBrush, Substance Painter, and the third one, you decide which one you want, Unreal, Marmoset, or Arnold, depending again on, on where you're going in, in regards to rendering. There are other ones such as Keyshot, or Redshift, Octane. Like there's a lot of different render engines, but those three I recommend quite a bit. And uh, of course, you have the code up here, which you can use to get some of them as well. But learning those three things, learning Substance Painter to get really cool textures for your character, learning ZBrush, if you're going to be a character or a creature artist, it's definitely a must. Um, the, of course, we have some of the top selling courses right here. So one of the, the ones that has been a huge hit, it's this one, the Complete Guide to ZBrush 2022. I know right now we're in ZBrush 2023, but all of the things that I talk about here are really important because not only do we teach the tools inside of ZBrush, we teach the principles of sculpting, which are really, really important. And I'm going to be giving you guys one of my best secrets in just a second, as soon as I finish the explanation of the 3D uh, production. So don't, don't go anywhere. Now, once you do that, once you have like your core DCC, and then your core, I wouldn't call them core. Well, nowadays, they can, I think, could be like the finest core. Imagine like the main body and then the, the, the arms, right? So you have Maya, you got ZBrush, and you got Substance Painter. Those are your like three main softwares that you need to know to become a, a 3D artist. Once you have those three things, you can jump onto the specialty tab. So have you seen doctors that are specialized like in the eyes, but there's doctors that are specialized specifically on like the iris or specifically on the cornea or something like very, very, very precise. Well, the more specialty you go or the more, the more you specialize on something, the more pro you're gonna be at that specific point it narrows down the available job offers on the market because um, there's not a lot of offers for very specific things, but it makes you the guy to go to if someone has a question or needs something about that. 
So that's when you got your software such as Houdini for simulations and VFX. You got Speed Tree for trees and uh, all of these organic things. You got Marvelous Designer for cloths. You got um, what else do we have here? Substance Designer if you wanna, if you want to create your own textures. Like all of these softwares are what I would consider to be specialty softwares. That it is important to learn them, especially for instance, if you're going to be a character artist, learning Marvelous Designer is really really handy because you're going to be able to create garments and cloths that are going to look way way more realistic than what you can do with sculpting. However. That should not be your first go. Like if you want to be a character artist right now, you first need to master ZBrush, anatomy, proportions, all of the things necessary to create a character. Once you know how to do that, then we jump onto Marvelous Designer. Because a very common mistake that people do is they start their three journey and they want to cover everything. They buy courses for every single course or every single software. And then you don't really learn one software before you're jumping onto the next one. So it's really, really important to be patient at the learning process and learn your like the, the core things. I also like to use this analogy of like a karate or kung fu, right? They have the the tiers, the the belts, and you need to practice and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And until you master the current belt you're in, you can take the test to jump onto the next one. Well, we don't have belts right here, but it works in a very similar fashion. Until you really know what you're doing with modeling, that's when I would recommend going into sculpting. Once you really know how you do your sculpting, that's when you jump onto the next stage, which is like texturing and so so on and so forth. That's how you jump from one point to the next one that would be my advice for um for learning some of this like dcc applications and all of the softwares right here now some of you might be like well what about post-production i'm the worst guy to ask about post-production because i don't work in post-production i've never done post-production most of the stuff that i do is for games and yes we do have a little bit of post-production in games but i'm not used to doing like motion graphics or compositing or things like this that's uh, like a whole different section of this like whole production pipeline. And um, th this is where you have things such as After Effects, Nuke, DaVinci Resolve for color correction, uh, rotoscoping, all of the like uh, creating mats and stuff like that to mask things out. That's again, something that I am aware of, but I don't really know. Our focus or most of the focus that we have right now with our courses is here in the production pipeline. Now, let's say you already learned Maya. Let's say you already learned ZBrush. You already know Substance Painter. You know your stuff. How can I make or how should I make a really good portfolio? Well, the first advice that I'm going to give you is do not do a tutorial as a portfolio. And now this, I know this sounds really weird considering that tutorials is what we do, right? But tutorials that we do, like the, the courses that we offer, they are meant to teach you guys how to do the things, how to follow the production pipeline. However, if you, let's say, get this one right here, the advanced texture character creation, and you do Thyros, the, the tiefling character, you're just copying or you're just following the things that I, Abraham, did when I was recording this course. The best advice I can give you guys whenever you're getting one of our courses is, yes, follow the process and try to get the same result or as close to the same result as what we do here on the, on the videos. But once you master this or once you do it once, do it again but now do it with your own character. I'm gonna like throw in a really quick example. If I do D and D character concepts, you're gonna find a lot of pictures. And nowadays with AI, you can even create your own. If you have a friend who draws, you can ask them to do one character for you. But with all of the information that you learned from the Thyros course, you should be able to do something like this character right here. Simple character, there's exposed anatomy on the arms and the face, a little bit on the chest. And we have simple props, a bag, a book, a dagger. We got all of this, uh, like a leather and the boots. So all of the information that you learned from this course right here, or these two courses, can be applied to create this character right here. And even though you're going to be using the exact same tricks, doing a character that has not been done before, that's what really shows your portfolio as a superior portfolio. Because showing that you can do a character that someone already did doesn't really tell much about the, the person's like capabilities. So that's why it's very, very important to take all of the things that you learn from the portfolios and do your own stuff. I'm going to give you another example. This is another one of our best selling courses by Victor Yamakado. Um, this is the uh, Anthony Hap Hopkins likeness. OK, you learn this one. You buy the course, you go through all of the hours and you learn how to do a likeness. Perfect. Now pick a different character. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to say Robert De Niro. OK. So I learned how to do Anthony Hopkins. And then with all of the information to learn about Anthony Hopkins, I do my version using all of those tricks or Robert De Niro, right? And that, that like thing, even though people might be able to tell, oh, he did this thanks to that tutorial, that's fine because it shows that you learned, you like gather all of that information and now you're ready to bring that information out. OK, 
Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's the that's one of my best advices. And I I think I've said this before. Like the best way to make use of a tutorial is to learn from the tutorial and then use the information that you learned to create your own stuff. Like how would you do like a stylized character? How would you use uh, like the Marvelous Designer course to create something of your own, like a different attire, a different garment? Like all of that information is really, really, really important to show that you know and uh, and can do, can, uh, what's the word, can uh, produce a quality content piece without the need of following a tutorial, okay? Now, I promised I was gonna give you guys one of my secrets about um, about 3D and about the whole thing right here. I have two quotes that I tell myself. They're like my personal, uh, like uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if mantra is the proper word, but it's uh, it's my personal way of viewing the world. And the first one, this is uh, very dear to my heart because it was the the quote that we use on my studio before the pandemic. Some of you already know the story, but I had uh, another school called Critical Hit, and um, and when that school uh, was uh, like uh, functioning, we had this. This was our like personal quote for the for the school, and it's always learning. Always learning. Always improving. That was our motto. And I've been using this ever like actually I've been using this since before the the academy. I've been using this for like fifteen or twenty years of my life, I think. And um, and this is a way that I tell myself that it doesn't matter where I am, it doesn't matter that I've been doing this for 12 years, there's always something new for me to learn. And by learning that, I can improve. And by improving, I can help other people. So my personal motto has uh, got me to where I am today, and I'm not planning on stopping, uh, or uh, yeah, I'm not planning to stop using it because it's what keeps me going forward. In in companies, they call this uh, quality, you know, uh, continuous improvement. It's a very, very, like, industrialized way to say it but that is that's the that's the main deal of things like you should always realize that there are things where you can improve learn a new trick learn a new software or learn a new pipeline learn from the best that's um they did a video i think it was last year like how to be the best or something like that and that's one of the tips like you need to learn from the best analyze study them imitate them and then improve upon it right so always learning always improving is one of my secrets to to keep working on the 3d and enjoying what i do that's the second uh, advice, actually. Uh, you need to enjoy what you do. So when you're, uh, as soon as you start like adventuring in this 3D world, you're gonna see that things can get a little bit tense. There's so many things that happen throughout the production pipeline. There are parts of the production pipeline that you might not like as much. So it's always important to try to focus on the things that you like the most. I've unfortunately have heard about people ha that have gone through the 3D world and then they end up taking jobs that they don't really love and they do parts of the pipeline that they don't really love. So my best advice is try to always focus on learning the things that you wanna do. Like if you don't want to do BFX, don't learn BFX. Don't don't add BFX to your pipeline or to your portfolio because if people ask you to do BFX and there's no other option, you're going to take the job and you're going to be miserable at it. So my best advice is focus on building your portfolio for the things that you want to do or for the job that you want to have because that's going to get you closer to your goal and it's going to allow you to um, to keep improving and keep learning and be really a really, really pro artist that can take any challenge in regards to that part of the job that you want. And finally, the, the last advice that I want to give you guys is try to learn as much as you can from things outside of the 3D world. And this is, this is one of the advices that it took me the most time to understand. But here's the thing. We as 3D artists, our job as a 3D artist is to replicate the real world into the digital world, right? Characters, environments, everything. So the more you know about how things are made in the real world, how builders build like buildings, how the human body works from an anatomy perspective, how tailors create all of the garments, for instance, in the case of a character, how plants grow, like all of that information will make you a better artist. And it sounds a little bit counterproductive because you're like, hey, if I have two hours of my time and I can learn something, why should I learn about like uh, planting trees and, and the way forests grow? instead of learning about speech tree. Well, the thing is, if you learn about that and then learn about speech tree, when you learn speech tree, you will know where to place your trees. You will know what types of trees there are in certain forests, in certain climates. And that sort of thing is what's gonna make your 3D work really, really impactful. Finally, the last little advice I'm gonna give you 
is you need to keep yourself inspired. Now, be very mindful about what I'm saying right now. I'm not saying you should keep yourself motivated. That's the wrong word that I'm using right now. It's not motivation that we're looking for. It's inspiration. Motivation is the sort of like energy that we get when you you have a good day, when you got good news, when you land a client or something, and you're like really motivated and you go straight and you start working. The problem with motivation is that our bodies cannot keep that level of motivation all the time. It's impossible. And ask any top athlete that you know or any friend that goes to the gym every single day. It's like, how do you keep yourself motivated? It's not motivation that they're going for. It's inspiration and discipline, right? So when you are sitting on your computer and you don't have the motivation to do anything, try to look for inspiration. I personally love going to art station. I like researching about the top artists, the top games, playing a game or just reading about the game and being like, wow, this guy did something amazing. I want to do something amazing. And that inspiration might bring in the motivation. But if it doesn't bring the motivation, it should at least give you the spark or the little push in energy to go with the discipline and be like, okay, I just saw, for instance, I'm going to be very honest. I just been playing Breath of the, not Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, uh, Tears of the Kingdom for the past like two hours. It's like, damn, this game is so amazing. It's really cool. I've been liking it a lot. And now, thanks to that inspiration that I'm getting from them, I want to keep learning more about uh, all of the things that I'm missing in my production pipeline to be a better artist because I want to be creating things that inspire people the way that game has inspired me. And it can be games, comic books, series, movies, like it can be anything. But that inspiration, seeing the the things that amazing people are doing, not feeling overwhelmed by it. Don't go, don't go the other way around and feel like, oh, I'm never going to be there. If you put in the effort, if you put in the discipline, if you work to always improve and always learn, you will be doing things that will inspire people. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about our career. Not only are we doing something that's really fun and really interesting, the things that we do are presented to the world, to an audience. And the way that the audience reacts, the way that they learn or the way they, the way they enjoy rather is one of the best feelings that I personally have felt as a, as a 3D artist. Like seeing the, the smile on kids' face when they try the VR experiences that we do on the museum, that sort of stuff, it's just really, really amazing. So yeah, that's it, guys. I know this video was a little bit weird or different than usual. I know it's not like specific 3D advice, like with tips and tricks. We're gonna be go we're gonna be coming back to this sort of stuff um throughout this week. But I wanted to give you this message because uh sometimes I think we focus too much on like the hows and whys of the 3D world, like the technical side of things. But there's so like a I almost would like to say like a philosophical side of things where where we need to understand why we do this. You need to define why you want to do this. And we need to find all of this like specific, like uh, like sparks of hope to keep us going and inspire us to do amazing things. So that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you think about the video. If you have an opinion or a comment, I'm I'm always uh, uh what's the word? I'm always happy to read them on the on the comments and, and talk about it. If you disagree with something that I said, it's perfectly valid. Give me your point and uh, we'll have a, a nice uh, discussion. Of course, just keep it civil, right? Now, before we go, I just want to remind you that today is the last day of the promo code. So if you are feeling inspired or more debated and you want to get any of our courses, um, this is the best time to do it because we have a huge discount. The code is up here. The link is down here. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to keep growing with our YouTube channel, that's perfectly fine as well. I would appreciate it. And any like, share, subscription really helps the channel as well. So that's it for now, my friends. Have a great Sunday and I'll see you back tomorrow for our Monday live stream. So hang on tight. And we'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.